I'm going to present some, uh, a summary of the results obtained during my PhD thesis. And uh, these results are focused on the uh, environmental fate of three emerging pollutants, taking into account the uh, natural alteration processes. So, well, uh, let's begin. <coughs> Uh, the scarcity of water worldwide has led to consider the reuse of uh, treated or untreated wastewater as a good option to uh, relieve the water stress caused by some human activities, for example, uh, agriculture. However, uh, this practice has some disadvantages, such as the entrance and dissemination of some pollutants into the environment. One example of this can be found in Tula Valley, as Dr. Jimenez uh, said in, in her presentation. In this place, uh, uh, the wastewater, the municipal wastewater of Mexico City has been reused for the last century uh, for agricultural irrigation purposes. And uh, we, we have found the, the presence of some emerging pollutants in the wastewater used for irrigation, the soils receiving this wastewater, the groundwater, and also the surface water bodies inside uh, Mesquital Valley. So uh, we can see here, well, I have something to find, but we can see here that 90% uh, of wastewater of Mexico City is sent to, to Mesquital Valley, and uh, here in this wastewater we can find uh, emerging pollutants, pollutants at a high concentration, micrograms to milligrams per liter, and uh, somehow this concentration is depleted when we analyzed uh, the groundwater in, in this site, in, in Mesquital, in Tula Valley. So uh, something is happening when uh, this wastewater is used for, for irrigation. Maybe the pollutants are uh, retained by soil, or maybe they, they have been degraded uh, during the transportation of wastewater from Mexico City to Tula Valley. So we have here a, a black box that uh, we need to explain in order to understand the limitations and the potentialities of this uh, natural alternation uh, system. And also, we need to explain this because uh, surface water and groundwater bodies in, in Tula Valley are, um, are considered as a good option to supply uh, drinking water for Mexico City in the near future. So uh, the natural alternation processes that uh, can draw the environmental fate of emerging pollutants in Tula Valley uh, are the photodegradation of these pollutants in the wastewater, in the surface water, and uh, probably in the very uh, superficial layer of the soil, the biodegradation of the pollutants in wastewater, in surface water, and in a lower extent in, in groundwater under anaerobic conditions. But also, uh, pollutants can be uh, retained by absorption onto the soil or, uh, on the contrary, uh, pollutants can be transported vertically through uh, the soil by the infiltration of wastewater or maybe horizontally by, by runoff. Therefore, the aims of this work were to determine the environmental fate of three emerging pollutants, namely the uh, anti-inflammatory drug naproxen, the anti-epileptic carbamazepine, and the antibacterial agent triclosan. Uh, this, uh, using laboratory experiments of photolysis, biodegradation, sorption and desorption, and transport through soil columns, uh, uh, carried out uh, simulating the conditions that we observe in the, f in the field. So uh, here you can see the uh, physical and chemical properties that are important to, uh, to take into account during the, uh, the uh, environmental fate studies of, uh, of emerging pollutants, and also uh, you can see the occurrence of these emerging pollutants, average values uh, of the occurrence in wastewater used for irrigation, in natural waters, this is surface water and groundwater in Tula Valley, and also in soils. <clears throat> for these experiments, we used uh, representative samples of the wastewater of Mexico City, a uh, typical soil used in, in Tula Valley. This soil has been irrigated, reusing untreated wastewater for 85 years. Uh, the groundwater that is beneath of this cropland and also uh, a sample of surface water taken from, um, uh, from a spring that, ha that was produced by the uh, constant infiltration of the wastewater through the soil. 
we characterized the li liquid matrices for uh, 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 common parameters and also for to, to determine the, the presence of emerging pollutants. And we found the, uh, the presence of these pollutants in, in wastewater, in surface water, in, non in groundwater, and also in the superficial soil. Uh, the laboratory work uh, was basically uh, uh, three types of experiments. We have dis uh, dissipation ex experiments based on photolysis and biodegradation. Uh, we also have uh, retention of the emerging pollutants into the soil by absorption, desorption, batch tests. And finally, uh, the mobilization of uh, the emerging pollutants through the soil uh, measured by uh, transport experiments in soil columns. <clears throat> Determination of the uh, pollutants was done using uh, GCMS. In the case of soil, uh, the analytes were uh, extracted for the solid matrix using the accelerated solvent extraction technique. Quantification was done by the uh, <coughs> internal standard technique. And also, uh, I think it is very important to, to note that quality assurance is uh, guaranteed by the use of surrogate standard. Uh, photodegradation experiments were carried out using a sun test CPS equipment. Uh, using this equipment, we, we tried to simulate the irradiation conditions that we can see in, in Tula Valley. So two hours of irradiation in this equipment is equivalent to 48, uh, 48 hours of uh, irradiation in the, in the field. Uh, and in the case of Tula Valley, it is located 20, 20 uh, degrees north latitude. So all the matrices, liquid matrices, uh, either wastewater, pure water, HPLC grade water, and, uh, and waste, wastewater, surface water, and pure water were uh, fortified with the mixture of the emerging pollutants to reach a concentration of uh, 100 uh, micrograms per liter and then the samples were irradiated in, in, the, in the apparatus. In the case of soil, well, soil was also fortified, and then the soil was put on uh, petri dishes in a thin layer, and then was irradiated. Um, samples were taken throughout the irradiation in order to determine the concentration of emerging pollutants in the matrices and to obtain the uh, the kinetics of photodegradation. So here we can see the photolysis kinetic of the three emerging pollutants in pure water. We can clearly see the, uh, the total transformation of triclosan and naproxen and some recalcitrants of carbamazepine. And we also measured the, uh, uh, the total organic carbon content only for pure water in order to evaluate the mineralization of the pollutants during the, the photolysis. And well, we can see that uh, mineralization was not complete, but it is worth to, to note that photolysis uh, uh, carried out in two phases. In the, phase, in the first phase, uh, the pollutants, the target pollutants, are transformed into the byproducts, but not mineralized. And in phase two, the byproducts are mineralized, but not completely. So we have, at the end of the experiment, uh, a fraction of carbamazepine and also uh, a bunch of byproducts that, well, in the future, we can uh, uh, characterize and quantify. So using uh, this kinetic da data, we were able to, uh, to determine the, the rate constant of photolysis for the three emerging pollutants. So in, in this table, I, I show the, the uh, rate constant of photolysis for the uh, three li liquid samples. We can see that photodegradation was uh, faster in pure water than in surface water, and the, the slowest photodegradation was observed in waste water. Uh, this was, th this was kind of expected, uh, taking into account that wastewater has um, a high concentration of suspended solids and it may uh, hinder the, the penetration of, of light in, in the liquid matrix. But also, dissolved organic matter present in wastewater can screen the irradiation uh, inc incident in, in, the, in the liquid matter and uh, in the liquid matrix and also uh, dissolved organic matter can scavenge some of the free radicals uh, formed during the photolysis. 
When we compare the results obtained in this study, uh, the, the kinetics uh, constant with those reported for uh, in other studies, we can find that uh, our uh, our constant, rate constants were higher than the reported elsewhere, and the, well, uh, at least for pure water and for wastewater, and this may be due because most of the photolysis uh, studies are carried out using um, irradiation conditions of European countries, and in, in our case we used irradiation conditions of uh, Latin, Ameri uh, Latin American countries. So uh, in, in the case of Mexico, irradiation, solar irradiation is higher than the solar ir irradiation that receive, is receiving, for example, in Sweden and Switzerland. So uh, from these results, we can conclude that photolysis can be an important uh, process for, for the environmental fate of emerging pollutants in southern uh, countries. When we talk about uh, soil, uh, we also uh, determine the, the kinetic con constant of photodegradation of the pollutants, and we observed that uh, these constants were uh, quite lower than the obtained uh, for, for wastewater. Well, this was also expected because uh, it, it is uh, telling us that, uh, that irradiation cannot penetrate the soil layer, even though it was a very thin soil, soil layer. Uh, in this experiment, we also decide to remove the organic matter of the soil. This was done by oxidation with, with uh, hydrogen peroxide. And after the removal of uh, organic matter of the soil, the, the soil was fortified and then irrad irradiated. And we observed that photodegradation increased when uh, we remove the organic matter of soil. And this is indicated that uh, the, orga the organic micropollutants um, are, being, uh, are absorbed into the organic matter of soil. And when we remove this organic matter, uh, they, they are exposed, totally exposed to the irradiation. So we can conclude from these results that uh, photolysis in soil is lower in organic, um, in organic soils. And well, uh, soils that have been irrigated using uh, untreated wastewater are, are organic soils. For biodegradation experiments, we used uh, these matrices, wastewater, surface water, soil, and groundwater. And biodegradation was evaluated uh, using only the uh, native uh, microorganisms consortia uh, present in these matrices. All the matrices were uh, inoculated, well, fortified with the emerging pollutants uh, using two levels of concentration, low mm -hmm. concentration and higher concentration. This was done in order to evaluate some in inhibitory effect of, uh, of high concentration, high initial concentration in the matrices. So the matrices were uh, fortified and then, then were uh, incubated under uh, uh, constant temperature and moisture uh, con conditions. In the case of surface water and soil, incubation took 70 days under aerobic conditions. For groundwater, uh, incubation was done under anaerobic conditions, and for wastewater, incubation was split into two phases. The first phase was under anaerobic conditions, simulating the transport of wastewater in the sewage system of uh, Mexico City. And the second phase was done under aerobic condition uh, for simulating the transport of wastewater in open, open canals uh, in, uh, within the irrigation district in Tula Valley. So uh, here we can see the um, uh, biodegradation kinetic scores uh, of the three emerging pollutants in wastewater. Uh, so we can see that uh, biodegradation was really slow on the, uh, under uh, anaerobic conditions, and biodegradation, inc uh, biodegradation velocity increased when we used uh, aerobic conditions. So triclosan was the most biodegraded compound, which is kind of ironic because this is an uh, anti antibiotic, well, it's an antimicrobial agent, followed by naproxen and carbamazepine was shown to be recalcitrant. 
Uh, we calculated the, the biodegradation rate constants for the three emerging pollutants in wastewater. And in, uh, in this moment, we, we could see that uh, uh, velocity of biodegradation was uh, higher for w w when, y when we used the lower, uh, the lower level of initial concentration, suggesting some in inhibitory effect, but when we compare the mass of pollutant biodegraded by the uh, native consortia, we can see that there was not an inhibitory effect. The same behavior was observed for surface water and also for soil. And, well, for uh, groundwater uh, biodegradation evaluated under uh, anaerobic conditions, we can see that biodegradation was almost zero even though we um, promoted the sulfate reducing or denitrifying condition by adding uh, sulfate and, and nitrate salts. So from these results, we can conclude that biodegradation is taking place at least in wastewater and soil and surface water and that wastewater and soil are the most reactive uh, matrices. For the sorption desorption experiments, we used standardized methodologies. <coughs> this consisted in uh, put in contact three grams of soil with um, a liquid uh, phase, either wastewater or uh, calcium chloride solution. So uh, the, the mixture of soil liquid was fortified with the mixture of the emerging pollutants, and six co initial concentrations were, was, uh, were tested for these experiments. And the fortified, uh, the fortified suspensions were uh, agitated for 24 hours and then centrifuged to separate the liquid and the solid phase. And the supernatans of centrif centrifusion was uh, withdrawn in order to determine the concentration of emerging pollutants in the liquid phase. And for, for the soil remaining in the tubes, a similar uh, volume of, of um, fresh solution with no addition of pollutants was added in order to perform the desorption test. So at the end of the experiment, we have uh, two supernatans, supernatans of desorption and supernatans of the desorption test. And both were analyzed in order to uh, determine the concentration of emerging pollutants and to construct the sorption-desorption isotherms. Um, to obtain these isotherms, we used a non-conventional sorption model. This model is known as uh, the initial mass model. We used this, uh, th this approach because, as you can remember, emerging pollutants are present in the soil prior to the experiments. So the presence of emerging pollutants in soil before experiments can uh, impact in the, uh, in the equilibrium of sorption desorption dur during the batch test. So we used this model, uh, which is described by, by that equation, linear equation. Uh, the RE factor represents the quantity of emerging pollutant that uh, is absorbed by, by the soil, but also the, it also represents the uh, quantity of the compound that can be released by soil. So uh, positive values of this parameter represent the absorption of the compound and negative value represent the release or the liberation of the compound from soil. So uh, taking a look to the isotherms, we can see that, uh, well, in the, in, in the case of the calcium chloride isotherm uh, uh, in, in the left, we can see well, we could see, but it's, it's not clear here, but I can guarantee that we could see the uh, liberation from soil of naproxen and carbamazepine when we used low con initial concentration in the, in the experiments. Uh, triclosan was not released at all. Uh, on the other hand, when we used wastewater as liquid phase, we, we didn't see the, the liberation of any of the compounds from soil. So in practical terms, we can say that when wastewater is applied uh, during irrigation in the field, the compounds are, are only sorbed into the soil. But in the case, for example, of a storm event or maybe if uh, soil is irrigated with uh, groundwater, uh, we, we will 
sh uh, we will be uh, some liberation of some of some uh, pollutant, for example, naproxen and, and carbamazepine, and probably other such as ibuprofen or diclofenac. Oh, we also obtain the uh, absorption and desorption parameters for the three emerging pollutants. We saw that triclosan was most sorbed uh, than carbamazepine and naproxen was the, more, the most mobile compound. And these results will be uh, complemented with uh, the transport experiments. For transport experiments, we used undisturbed soil columns, which were obtained directly uh, on the field. So in the laboratory, we uh, used uh, the, transi the transient hydraulic regime to carry out the, the experiments. Uh, in this uh, approach, we, uh, we, applied, uh, we applied water at the top of the column and then water is led to infiltrate by gravity through the soil column, which is similar to, to what is happening in, on the field. So, uh, Seven irrigation events were carried out during uh, the, the transport experiments. In the first irrigation event, we applied the uh, mixture of the, of the emerging pollutants along with the uh, conservative tracer bromide. Uh, in the other six irrigation events, we only applied calcium chloride as uh, liquid phase in order to displace the, the, the pollutants through the soil columns. The leachate were uh, recovered at the bottom of the soil columns and divided into a 100 milliliters of samples. At the end of the experiment, we cut the, the, the columns and into three parts and the presence of the emerging pollutants in the remaining soil was determined in order to uh, obtain a mass balance. So uh, from the analysis of the leachate, we can obtain the breakthrough curves of the emerging pollutants and also for bromide. So here we can see that uh, the transport of emerging pollutant was delayed by soil, uh, by absorption of the emerging pollutants into the soil. Naproxen was the, the compound more mobile, followed by carbamazepine, and we didn't find the presence of triclosan in any of the uh, leachate, leachate samples analyzed. When we look the mass balance, we can see a high presence of naproxen in the leachate, which confirms the high mobilization of these pollutants, a high concentration of carbamazepine in soil, and for triclosan, we didn't find uh, we, we didn't find, find triclosan neither in leachate nor the soil. So it is indicated that uh, triclosan was not uh, not uh, uh, sorbed but degraded into the, within the soil. So from these results, we can conclude that, uh, well, naproxen was the, the, the most mobile compound and it is important to understand what is happening to the byproducts uh, generated for, for, uh, from triclosan. So this is a summary of the results obtained. The three emerging pollutants were susceptible to be photodegraded, triclosan, more than naproxen, more than carbamazepine, and uh, photodegradation was higher in pure water, more than in surface water and wastewater in soil. The soil organic matter hinders the photodegradation of the emerging pollutants. The biodegradation of the emerging pollutant occurred in both in water and soil, but wastewater and soil were the most reactive uh, matrices. Uh, triclosan and and naproxen were uh, found as readily biodegraded, while carbamazepine was recalcitrant for uh, biodegradation, and the increment in the concentration of the pollutant in both liquid matrices and soil did not uh, affect the, the biodegradation. The three compounds were sorbed into the soil. Naproxen and, uh, and carbamazepine were, were uh, liberated from soil when we used uh, clean water and the soil showed the capacity to delay the transport of the three emerging pollutants studied. And thank you.